Today we need to have a serious conversation about bugs. Bugs are something that all indoor gardeners dread and hate and don't want to get, but it happens to the best of us. And even with your outdoor gardens, this is a very common problem. From aphids to white flies to the little tiny black gnats, these can infest our gardens. But when you're working inside, it's a little bit more complicated to get rid of them. With inside, we can't really grab a hose and just start soaking everything down. I'm gonna show you a process that I do when I'm trying to keep up on the bugs. But for me right now, they are so out of control, like I let them go way too long, knowing I was gonna do this video. So it is content, but I let them go too long and now my only option is to start over, but that's okay because we're going into the outdoor garden season as well. And all of this can kind of run its course and we'll start things over. So let's talk about a few things that you can do to notice that you have bugs. I'm gonna grab one of my wasabi lettuces or wasabi greens. And this is a perfect example of all of this yellowing that is starting to happen. Now, when this yellowing starts happening or the leaves start burning on your lettuces, a really common thought would be your pH levels. Now that is very true. You're gonna wanna test your pH levels and make sure that they're normal. And if everything is normal with your nutrients and your pH, but you're still noticing all of this yellowing, then you're gonna wanna flip the leaves over. If you're at the beginning stages of an infestation with your bugs, they're going to be on the underneath side of your leaves and they live right down on the vining section of the leaves and they're sucking the nutrients right out of that part of the plant. But my infestation is so bad, I can see them right on top. So the white flies really look like little pieces of white dust and the aphids are green. Now the green aphids, and I see one actually right here on the edge, I don't know if we're gonna pick that up. There's an aphid right on the edge there. And that's a good indicator when they're actually walking around and I see them walking up the sides of the towers. This has gone way too far. This is not just one or two that I caught early on and I can really fix the problem at this point. Now with the lettuces, the really big lettuces, Another really good indicator, obviously this one has a lot of the yellowing colors as well, but there is this shimmer and this shine to the leaves. And that is actually this residue that they're leaving behind. It's almost like a syrup and it's really sticky and tacky. Some of these I should be able to keep. I'm gonna do the cleanup process with you today. And then these are gonna go into pots for right now and then they will hit the outdoor gardens. I don't wanna just dispose of them if I think there's any possible way that I could save these. Now with my jalapeno pepper plant, this actually has some little jalapenos growing right here, but there is such a bad problem on the leaves. One thing to be aware of is there are certain plants that the bugs are not gonna like. You could plant every other plant with these types of plants to help reduce the infestation. I've done marigolds and it didn't really do too much when I had a problem last year. But something like a mint plant, this is not infected at all. You really could control the bug issue or know that when you have this type of plant, you're not going to have a bug issue. So if you really wanted to plant an entire unit of plants that are bug resistant, that's always a way to guarantee that you're not gonna have a problem. And oh my goodness, I love the smell. Another one that is unaffected from what I can see are my strawberry plants. Now we've already been eating a lot of strawberries and yes, I have a runner I'm gonna have to snip off. So we've been eating a lot of these already and my plan is to clean out this system, clean out both of the eye harvests and get all the tomatoes out because this is just, I'm getting kind of over <laughs> 
the tomatoes, really, honestly. And so we're gonna clean everything out. And then I'm gonna take the garden to strawberries and we're gonna start fresh lettuces and kale in the new unit. So if you subscribe to the channel, you will see these change over, over the summer, as well as heading outside and doing some outside gardening. If you have determined that your bug problem, where there are more bugs than there are plants, then I'm gonna show you how you can start to solve your problem. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a bucket of water and I put one gallon of water in here. There are different products that you can use to mix into your water. This I'm gonna leave up to you as far as what choice you wanna make. If you wanna to go totally organic, there's a ton of organic choices if you wanna go more on the pesticides and maybe they're just flowering plants or there's something you're not gonna be eating and you're okay with that, make that decision for yourself. Now these plants are mostly what I would be eating. That's what I usually grow is edible type plants. And so I choose a few different things. Eco Garden is one of those things. Now this is one that comes and goes on Amazon. It can be hard to find, so I always grab it when it's in stock. This is a concentrate. So you're gonna add this to water, dilute it down, and then you can use it. It actually is a botanical insecticide, and it does have 98% other ingredients. They do claim that it is natural and organic, but I don't know what those 98 other ingredients are. So when I use this, I'm gonna make sure that I am rinsing and washing my plants really good after I have treated them or I don't eat them for about a week or two and make sure that this again is washed off. Another way that you can go is a neem oil mixed with a Bronner soap. These are my two favorite products that I use. And this Bronner soap is actually, I believe the lavender smell. And I just like having that extra scent. Now the neem oil is going to be a little bit stinky on its own. We're gonna go ahead and do the neem oil and the soap for today. So with this bucket, there are lines inside. These are those bendy flexible buckets that you can get at any local garden store. So I know I'm at one gallon of water. So with the neem oil, I'm gonna use a half of a teaspoon of the neem oil and we're gonna add that and just kind of stir it right into the water. And then oil is not going to want to mix up very well at all. So to get that to mix up better, I'm going to add the same half teaspoon of the soap. Now one reason why we like to add the soap is the soap will actually foam up on the top of your surface and that will help trap your bugs. So I'm getting a little bit of a breakup from that neem oil, so you're just gonna wanna make sure you're giving it a good stir and try and get your soap to really start to foam up. And it doesn't have to be super foamy, but just a little. Now the pumps kicked on for the systems behind me, so hopefully they are not too noisy, but I don't like to interrupt them just because I'm recording a video for you guys. We are gonna start with the lettuce. Now you'll take this plant, you'll just dip it upside down and you're gonna put it right in the water. If you wanna be a little bit more aggressive with it and you're using the garden, go ahead and take this off. If you're using any other type of net cup or net basket, you should be fine just holding it like this gonna dip it right in the water and then start swirling it around. So just by dipping it and wiping it off in the water, and don't worry, your plants can handle it. If there was a big storm outside or it was raining, they would get this type of abuse. If you're going to soak them, make sure that your root system is outside of the water because we don't want the roots to start to draw in anything or try and get watered from this water. But if your roots do get wet, that's totally fine because there could be bug larvae down inside the root system. So a little bit of water is fine. We just don't want it to be sitting in this for a long period where it's drawing that water in and just really drinking it up. Now grab yourself a towel and lay it off to the side and then you can take your plants out and then we're just gonna set them off on the side with 
the towel. This is a mini eggplant and it's not doing well at all. I'm getting a lot of color turning from this and it is just covered. So again, this is gonna be another one that I'm gonna try and save and put outside. If you want to know how to transplant your plants from your indoor gardens and get them ready to go to the outside gardens, check out my other video on how to do that. I give you all of the step-by-step -step instructions on getting them ready for outside. Once you've dipped it and you've got a really good leaf that you can check to make sure the bugs are off, go ahead and give yourself a good check. Maybe take your fingers and rub down the leaves just to get anything else that was on there off. And the most disgusting thing about this project is actually looking in this basket. After you've done enough of these plants, they will be loaded with bugs. They're gonna be floating all over and it is so disgusting. I'm gonna be taking this lettuce and this one is a flashy lettuce. So you can see it's got a lot of different color variations in it. If you are going to be keeping your plants, you are not going to be dismantling everything, cleaning everything out. You're not to that stage yet. You are just trying to catch the bugs at the very beginning. You're dipping them, you're cleaning them, you're washing them, and you're trying to save them for your indoor plants. The next step I'm gonna show you might seem a little bit crazy, but it has been one of the best things that has worked for me. Now we're gonna pretend that we've already washed this one, we've already let it dry out on the towel, and we're gonna do the next step. We're gonna prevent any of those other bugs that might have been escaping or crawling on the system that we didn't see. Introducing diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth can be your absolute best friend. My husband grabbed this bag for me at one of our local farm stores because he knows I'm always dealing with bugs. We actually use a different type of diatomaceous earth out in the chicken coop because it helps with their little mites that they can get on their feet and in their feathers and they can dust bathe in this. This particular diatomaceous earth is organic, which most of them are, and this is for indoor and outdoor use and it's also made for edible plants. So you're gonna wanna check which diatomaceous earth you got and make sure that it is okay for your edibles. Of course, if you're using this, again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're rinsing your plants off before you eat them and you will see why you would want to do that anyway. I'm just gonna put this bag right down here in front of me and then I'm gonna grab my plant. What I'm gonna do is use my hands to coat these leaves. If you have any type of allergies, if you are sensitive with your skin to anything, please wear gloves. I don't, but the diatomaceous earth can cause a little bit of an itching. So if you don't wear gloves like me, make sure you're washing your hands thoroughly afterwards. So now I have a little bit of this ash, almost like an ash type feeling to it on my hands. I'm going to rub my leaves down. And this will make a mess all over your floor. Your plants are not gonna be as pretty when they're sitting in the systems, but you know, sometimes it's more about the protection of your plant than anything else. Make sure you are rubbing the underneath side of the plant as well, because that's where the majority of those bugs like to live. This is what my plant looks like. It's not as beautiful and as attractive with this dust on it, but if any bugs get back on it, the diatomaceous earth is so small and so fine that it gets into their body and it basically cuts them. It's kind of bad, it sounds bad, just don't think of it at a microscopic level. We're just going to know that this is going to work and kill off our bugs. This will help save your plants for your indoor gardens. If you are too far gone like I am, sadly, see, we're not all perfect, right? I am going to do this method of rinsing them and washing them, but I'm not going to put the diatomaceous earth on them. I'm gonna go from this process to the potted process and put them outside into the summer gardens. And then these systems are going to get thoroughly cleaned. That is a very important thing to remember. Even though you're dipping and covering your plants and putting them back in the systems, don't forget about the system itself. I can actually feel a sticky and tackiness 
on the system from those white flies. They are leaving that residue actually behind on the system. Take your system apart and give it a good cleaning. Wipe it all down. You can also use this neem oil and soap mixture with your water and use that on paper towels to wipe down the system. And the absolute best method, 100% guaranteed your bugs will be gone, but so will your plants. Take everything apart, take all of your plants apart, whether you just have to get rid of them, move them out to the gardens and let your systems rest. I recommend about two to three weeks. It sucks, it's terrible, and that's where I am at today. Every single one of my small tabletop systems are empty. These grew all of the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the zucchinis and the pickles to go outside into the outside garden. So I use them for my greenhouse, but I didn't turn around and just plant them right away. They're dry and they're ready to go for my next season or cycle of plants. So with that being said, you're probably going to see some videos with a very a bigger naked background and you will just know that when that happens and you see nothing behind me, I am in a reset mode. But don't worry, we're gonna have plenty of content outside because it is finally planting time. It's finally springtime and I'm gonna make sure I take you guys on the journey of the outside gardens with our cattle panel trellises that we started last year. If you have any other questions or any other suggestions, please leave comments down below and I'll see you on the next video has a lot of yellowing color to it.